Hi, today we're going to be learning about numeric patterns, focusing on patterns that are written in the form of a sequence. So first let's talk about what numeric patterns are. Numeric patterns, or number patterns, are made up of a series of numbers that follow a certain rule. Um, each number in the pattern is called a term, and it has a term number, which is the position that it is in the pattern. Let's have a look at an example. So we've got over here 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20, and so on. So the, the pattern continues, okay? So now, in this pattern, these are all what we call terms, and they each have a term value, which is the number that you see there, okay? So the value of the first term is 4. The value of the second term is 8, the value of the third term is 12, the value of the fourth term is 16, and the value of the fifth term is 20. Okay, so they have a term number, which is the position that it is in the um, in the pattern, and they have a value as well. So I could write it like this, I could say term 1 is equal to 4. And in this example, n, which is our term number, that is the position, is equal to 1, and the value where n is 1 is 4. Term 2 is equal to 8 and in that case n is equal to 2. Remember n is the position so over here this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's my first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term and these are my n values and these are my term values over here. They are the actual values of the term for the different positions. Okay so over here term 3 is equal to 12 where n is 3. Term 4 is 16 where n is 4 and term 5 is 20 where n is 5. So this number at the bottom over here next to the t tells us the position of that term, t meaning term, so the position of the term in the pattern. So this is the first term, is term 1, term 2 is the second term, term 3 is the third term, and so on. Okay, so that is what we mean we're talking about terms and term numbers. The, the term number is the position of the term in the pattern, and the term is what you see in the pattern, it's the value. Okay, now this pattern can be described in words in a few different ways. Okay, so first of all, I can describe it in terms of how I'm counting. If you look at this over here, we are counting in fours. Okay, another way of describing it is to look at what is happening when we go, when we move from one term to the next. Okay, so what do I do to this term to get that term? And is it the same each time? So let's have a look and see what happens. If I go from the 4 to the 8, I'm adding 4. And if I go from 8 to 12, I'm also adding 4. And if I go from 12 to 16, I'm also adding 4. If I go from 16 to 20, I'm also adding 4. So I am adding 4 every time, okay? So that is what we call a constant difference, that the same thing is being done as in added or subtracted every single time, okay? So I can talk about how the pattern is progressing in terms of what I'm doing to get from one term to the next each time, okay? So in this case, we are adding 4. Four to each term to get the next term. Okay, so that's the second way that we can describe it in words. The third way that we can describe it in words is to look at the relationship between the term number and the term value and see if there is a common thread that is running through here. So if I look at this and I can see, well, what do I do to n to get 4, to, for, to 1 to get 4? What do I do to 2 to get 8? What do I do to 3 to get 12? Now there are two ways of getting from 1 to 4. I can either add 3 or I can times by 4. 
There are two ways of getting from 2 to 8. I can either add 6 or I can times by 4. The timesing by 4 is the same, okay? From 3 to 12, I can either add 9 or I can times by 4. So again, timesing by 4 is coming up each time. So multiplying by 4 is something that we can do to every single term number and we can end up with that term. So I can describe it in words by saying that the term number is being multipli multiplied by 4. Okay, so there's three different ways that we can describe this pattern in words. We can also either talk about how we are counting. Are we counting forwards? Are we counting backwards? And what interval are we counting in? We can talk about what are we doing to one term to get to the next term. In this case, we are adding four to each term to get to the next term. Or we can talk about the relationship between the term number and the term. So in this case, we are multiplying the term number by four to get the term. Okay, so that is how we would describe it in words. Next, we're going to talk about how we can actually get a rule. Remember I said right in the beginning that a numeric pattern is a series of numbers that follow a certain rule. So now let's have a look at what I'm talking about or what I mean when I'm talking about a rule. Okay, so for our rule, in this example, I already spoke about this, that if we look and we see how do we get from there to there, and is there a common way of getting from the term number to the term value each time, we found that we could multiply by 4 every single time. It would always give us... I wrote 50 here. It's supposed to be 5. <laughs> um, it will always give us the term value. Okay? So our rule is going to be based on that concept and say, well, Tn, now in this case, again, T means term, and N means that means means for any term number. So whatever term number I put here is my N value that I'm going to be using, okay? So Tn is equal to, what must I do every time to the term number to get to the term? I must multiply it by 4. We said that over here, okay? So 4 times N. Okay, so whatever my term or whatever my term number is, so if I want the third term, I'm going to say four times three. If I want the fifth term, I'm going to say four times five. If I want the tenth term, I'm going to say four times ten. Now this can also be written like this, four n. We don't need to write the time sign between a number and a letter because it can't be confused with anything else. For numbers, we have to write the time sign because I can't write this over here, 1 times 3, and expect that to not look like a 13. It will look like a 13. But it, with numbers and letters, we don't need to worry about that. So you don't have to write the time sign. If there's no time sign written, it means multiplication. If there's no sign, rather, written, it means multiplication. Okay, so Tn is equal to 4n. Okay, so this is my rule over here. Now, I can use this rule to work out the value of any term in my pattern. I can use this rule to work out the 10th term without having to work out all the terms that lead up to that. I can use this rule to work out my 100th term without having to lead, work out all the, the terms that lead up to that. So let's use it quickly to work out the 10th term. In that case, I would be saying T10 is equal to, okay? Remember, this number over here tells me my term number. So I want the 10th term, so I'm saying T10 is equal to, and the N is my, the value or the position of the term. So it's going to be 4 times 10, okay? And that gives me 40. So now I know that my 10th term would be 40 without having to do all that counting to get to it. I can work that out like that. I can also work out any other term. I can work out the hundredth term if I want to by saying 4 times 100. And that gives me 400. So I can work out any term by using my rule and replacing the n with a term number that I want um, it to be or that I want to work out. So in my rule over here, the n is the term number. Okay, over here, tn is the term at that position.
so that is the rule that we can work out for this particular pattern now the rule is very useful because it can allow us to work out a particular term in a pattern and it can also help us to work out where a particular term is in a pattern as well if we know what the, the value of a term is we can use it to work out where it is in the pattern by using the rule as well okay so now let's go and have a look at an example that we're going to be doing um, where we're going to work all of this out from the beginning okay so in this pattern or in this example we have got the pattern 36912 and the first thing we need to do is we need to write down the next three terms in the sequence okay so first in this pattern let's just write it down quickly we've got three six nine twelve and so on okay so the first thing I'm going to do anytime you get a pattern for the first time I recommend always checking to see if there is a constant difference okay so to do that we're going to see what do we do to each term to get to the next term so over here I am adding three I'm adding three I'm adding three okay it's the same every single time so I have a constant difference of three okay now I can use that to help me to work out what the next three terms will be by continuing doing the same thing. So for question A, I'm going to add 3 again and that gives me 15. Then I add 3 again and it gives me 18. And then I add 3 again and it gives me 21. Okay, so for question A, I'm just adding 3 every time to get the next three terms. Then question B is to describe the pattern in words. Okay, so now we said there are three ways that we can do this. We can first we can talk about how are we counting. In this example, we are counting in threes. Okay. Or we can talk about what are we doing to get from one term to the next. We are adding three to each term to get to the next term. Or we can talk about what is the relationship between the term number and the actual term. So if we have a look over here, our term number is 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you look and see what is there a relationship between them, if I take the 1 and get to 3, there are two ways I can do that. I can either add 2 or I can times by 3. Here I can add 4 or times by 3. Here I can add 6 or times by 3. Here I can add eight or times by three so each of them has a common thing that I can do which is multiplying by three so my rule or my pattern would be that I'm multiplying my term number by three to get the term okay so those are just three different ways of describing what is happening in this pattern. Okay, so for question C, we need to work out the 10th term in the pattern. So to work out the 10th term in the pattern, I have a couple of choices. I can either carry on counting until I get to the 10th term. So carry on counting in threes. I've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and so on, until I get to the 10th one, which would be 30. Or I can use what I said over here, which is that we are multiplying the term number by 3. So if we're trying to find the 10th term, we're going to multiply 10 by 3, and that will also give us 30. So we can work out where it or what that value is for the 10th term um, in either of those two different ways. Question D. Determine which term in the pattern equals 60. So now to work out which term is 60, again, I can carry on counting up all the way to 60 and then see how many terms there were. Or I can uh, use what I was saying over here and say we are multiplying the term number by 3. So I can say, well, if my term is 60, what did I have to multiply by 3 to get 60? It must have been 20. So either way, you would get to the 20th term. So the 20th term is the term that is equal to 60. So you can also write it like that, T20. Okay, so the 20th term or T20. And then question E, 
we need to find the rule for this pattern. So now the rule is always going to be Tn equals something. So in this case, Tn is equal to what are we doing each time to the term number to get the term value? We are multiplying by 3 every single time. So 3 times n or 3n. So that is what my rule should look like. Tn is equal to 3n. Okay, so now you're going to do one for yourself. In this example, you've got the pattern negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. And you need to uh, first write down the next three terms. You need to describe the pattern. You need to find the ninth term. You need to find which term is equal to negative 55. And then finally, you need to find the rule for the pattern. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes to work on this.
Okay, so let's go through all of those now. So in this example, we had the pattern negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, and so on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see if there is a constant difference. So from negative 5 to negative 10, how do I get from there to there? I must subtract 5. Then how do I get from negative 10 to negative 15? Again, I must subtract 5. And then again, from negative 15 to negative 20, I must subtract 5. So I have a constant difference of negative 5 for this one. Okay, so the question A is to find the next three terms in the pattern. So I can, if I carry on doing the same thing of subtracting 5 every time, I will end up with negative 25, negative 30, and negative 35. So that's what you should have got for question A. For question B, you have to de um, describe the pattern in words. So first of all, there are... Again, three ways of doing it. So the first way that I can do it is to just talk about how we are counting. Now, in this example, we are counting backwards in fives. You could also say that we are counting in negative fives. Then question C... Oh, sorry, there's two other ways that I can describe that. I can also say that we are subtracting 5 from each term to get the next term. Or we can say that we are multiplying if you look at the term number over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, how do I get from 1 to negative 5? I can either multiply by negative 5 or I can subtract 6. To get from 2 to negative 10, I can either multiply by negative 5 or I can subtract uh, 12. To get from 3 to negative 15, I can either multiply by negative 5 or I can subtract 18. And to get from 4 to negative 20, I can either... Uh, multiply by negative 5 or I can subtract 24. So obviously the one that is constant is that we are multiplying by negative 5 every time. Okay, so I can say that we are multiplying the term number by negative 5. Okay, so there are just a few ways that you could have described that. You obviously don't need to do all three. You only need to do one. Question C was to determine the ninth term in the pattern. So T9 is what we want to work out. We want to work out what is the value of T9 in this pattern. Okay, so like I said, you can work it out by continuing on counting until you get to the ninth term. Or you can use what we did over here and say, well, we are multiplying the term number by negative 5. So the term number for the ninth term would be 9. So if I multiply 9 by negative 5, that gives me negative 45. So either way, you should have got the answer of negative 45 for that one. Then for question D, you determine which term in the pattern equals negative, five, negative 55. So again, you could continue counting until you get to negative 55 and see how many terms you have altogether. You should get 11. Or you can say that um, because we know that we are multiplying the term number by negative 5, we say what must we multiply by negative 5 to get negative 55? We need to multiply 11 by negative 5. So it's our 11th term. Or T11 is equal to negative 55 for question D. And then the last one to work out the rule Tn is equal to, and again, what do I do every time to my n value, which is the term number, to find out what the term is equal to? We said that we were every time multiplying by negative 5. So Tn is equal to negative 5 multiplied by n, so negative 5n. Okay, so that's what you should have got for each of those in that example. Okay, so now, in the examples we've done up until this point, it's been possible for you to find out what, in this case, like the ninth term was or which term was equal to a certain amount uh, without needing to know the 
the rule. But sometimes the rule becomes more complicated or the pattern becomes more complicated and it becomes more necessary to know what the rule is and to be able to use the rule to be able to work those things out instead of working them out just by counting on or um, trying to find out which term it is also by counting on. It's because sometimes you might be asked to find out the hundredth term. You don't want to have to count on a hundred terms to be able to get to it. It's much better to be able to use the rule. So it's important for us to know how to use the rule. So that is what we're going to be doing now. We're going to be practicing working out rules for patterns because if you know how to work out the rule then the rest of the work is going to become a lot easier for you. Okay so now we're going to go through a few examples and um, I'm going to give you a minute to work out the rule for each of them. Okay so for the first one you've got the, the, uh, the pattern 3, 4, 5, 6 and you need to work out what the rule is for this one. When I talk about the nth term, it's the same as Tn, which is the same as the rule. So any of those ways of saying it means the same thing. You're trying to find what Tn is equal to. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to work out the rule for this pattern. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this one, we had the pattern three, four, five, six. Okay, so if you first of all look to see what the common difference is or the constant difference, we are adding one each time to get to the next term. Okay. Now, to find our, our rule, we're always going to be trying to find Tn. Okay, so I need to know what am I doing to my n value, which is the term number, so what am I doing each time to that value to get to the term value, okay? So in this one over here, if I go from 1 to 3, I have two ways of getting there. I can either multiply by 3 or I can add 2. This one over here, if I multiply by 3, I will get 6. I won't get 4. So multiplying by 3 is not going to work as my rule here. So let's try adding 2. If I add 2, I get 4. If I add 2, I get 5. From, from 3, I get 5. Here from 4, if I add 2, I get 6. So in this case, adding 2 is actually going to work every single time. Okay, so I'm going to have n, which is my position, plus 2. So your rule for this one should have been tn equals n plus 2. Okay, so now let's do... Uh, do the next example. Okay, in this one you've got 2, 4, 6, 8. And again, I'm going to give you one minute to work on this.
Okay, so let's see what you got for that one. So in question B, we had 2, 4, 6, 8. So first of all, let's see if there is a constant difference. So if I go from 2 to 4, I'm adding 2. From 4 to 6, I'm adding 2. From 6 to 8, I'm adding 2. So I have a constant difference of plus 2, okay, or positive 2. Then also let's have a look at our term numbers. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. So to go from 1 to 2, I can either add 1 or I can multiply by 2. To go from 2 to 4, I can either add 2 or, or I can multiply by 2. To go from 3 to 6, I can either add 3 or I can multiply by 2. So I'm seeing that every time I'm able to multiply by 2. Over here, if I go from 4 to 8, I can also multiply by 2. So I've got a common thing that's happening every time I'm multiplying by 2. So Tn is equal to 2 times n or 2n. Okay, now the next one, you need to be a little bit more careful with this one. I'm going to give you one minute again to work on it. Okay, let's see if you manage to get that one. So in question C, again, let's first look and see if there is a common difference or a constant difference. So I've got over here, plus 2, then plus 2, and plus 2. So I've got a constant difference of plus 2. So every time I'm adding 2 to get to the next term. Let's have a look at our term numbers. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's see if there's anything that I can do by adding or multiplying, that will get me from the term number to the term the same every time. So to go from 1 to 3, I can either add 2 or I can times by 3. Here, to go, to go to, from 2 to 5, I can either add 3 or I can times by uh, 2.5. Yeah. Or I can times by 2.5. Okay. No, neither of those is the same as what I could do for going from 1 to 3. So now I've got a problem, okay? Now I want you to have a look at this pattern in comparison to that pattern. Every single term in this pattern is one more than the terms in that pattern. I had a common difference of 2. Here I have a common difference of 2. But here I was going 2, 4, 6, 8. And here I was, it was all shifted up 1. And I've got 3, 5, 7, 9. So this pattern is actually the same as that pattern, except that everything is one more, okay? So I can say Tn is equal to, it's the same as that, but I must add 1 to get each term. So 2n, which is what I had for the rule for that one, plus 1. So now how can we get to this if we didn't already have that pattern in front of us? Okay, so now here is the trick. When you are trying to find the rule of a pattern, the reason I said always start off by looking to see if there is a common difference is that constant difference is actually very important. If you look over here at each of the ones we've done so far, this is the, uh, the first example that I did with you. We had 3, 6, 9, 12. And my constant difference was 3, and in my rule, I've got 3n. The second example we did, my constant difference was negative 5. And in my rule, I had negative 5n. Over here, my constant difference was plus 1. Now, you couldn't see it over here. But if there's no number in front of a, of a letter like that, 
it actually is a positive one, okay? In this one over here, I had plus two, and here I had two in. Over here, I had plus two, and over here I have two in, okay? So this constant difference that we are finding every single time is actually going to be the number that's going to go in front of n that I'm going to multiply n by. Now, if I know what that is, I can then use that knowledge to help me to work out what this needs is if, if, it's just, if it's not the same as that, if my first term is not the same as that. So in all of these other ones I did, not that one, in all of these other ones I did, the first term was the same as my common difference. Okay, over here. My first term was 3, my difference was 3. Here, my first term was negative 5, my difference was negative 5. So if those are the same, then I don't have to worry about plusing or minusing anything at the end. But in this case, my first term is not the same as my difference. So what I need to do is I need to see what do I need to do to make it the same or to make my difference the same as that, because that, whatever I have to do to make this the same as that, is what I'm going to be doing on the end of here. So if I've got plus 2 over here, and I've got a 3 over there, I need to add 1 to get the 2 to get 3. So that's why I'm going to add 1 over here. And then that's going to do it to every single one of those terms. So every single term, I'm going to have the 2 in, and then I'm going to add the 1, and that's going to give me from 4 to 5, get me from 6 to 7, get me from... 8 to 9 and so on. Okay, so my rule for this one is Tn equals 2n plus 1. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find your common difference or the constant difference. That is super, super important. That is going to help you to know what goes in front of n. And then you're going to see what is the difference between the first term and that constant difference. Okay, so this over here is how I get this value. And this is how I find out what I must do over here. Okay, so now let's see if you can use that to help you to do the next question. Okay, so in this example, we've got the pattern 7, 10, 13, 16. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to try and work this one out, to find the rule for this pattern. Okay, so let's go through that one. So in this example, we had 7, 10, 13, 16. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there is a constant difference. So here I'm going plus 3, then plus 3, and plus 3. So yes, I do have a constant difference, and that constant difference is plus 3. So my rule is going to start off by saying Tn equals 3, it's positive 3, n. Whatever that constant difference is, is what I'm going to multiply n by. So I'm going to have tn equals 3n. But now, if it was just 3, 6, 9, 12, 
then I'll just leave it at 3n, but it's not. It's 7, 10, 13, 16. So how can I get to the 7 instead of just having 3, 6, 9, 12? How do I get 7, 10, 13, 16? So now I need to see what must I do to this pattern to get that pattern. Okay, so remember we said we need to find the difference between t1 and the constant difference. Whatever I must do to the constant difference to get t1, that is what I'm going to be doing over here. So what must I do to 3 to get 7? I must add 4. If I add 4, I'm going to go from a pattern that looks like this. to this. Now if you look over here, from 3 to 7, I plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. So 3n on its own is just going to give me that pattern. But now I need this pattern, so I need to take each of those terms and I need to increase them all by 4, and that's why I have this plus 4 over here. So for question D, you should have got tn equals 3n plus 4. Then question E. In this one, you've got 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. So I'm going to give you one minute again to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through that one and see if you got it right. So we're starting with zero, then we go negative two, negative four, negative six, so we are counting back in twos. The common difference that we have over here, every time we're going minus two, minus two, minus two. So that is what our constant difference is. So when we write our rule, we're going to have tn equals negative two n. So we know that straight away. Now are those the same? If I just had negative 2n, this is what my pattern would look like. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. That is what my pattern would look like if my rule was just negative 2n. But it's not. It's 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. So how am I going to get from this to that? Okay, or how do I get from negative 2 to, to 0? You don't have to write this out every time because you've got the difference over there already. How do I get from that to that? I need to add 2. So my rule is negative 2 plus negative 2n plus 2. Now you could also write this, if you wanted, as tn equals 2 minus 2n. That is another way of writing it so that you have the positive number first so it just looks a little bit nicer but either way is fine okay and then the last one that we're going to do of just finding rules at the moment is this one over here you've got seven negative two three eight or negative seven negative two three eight okay i'm going to give you one minute again to work on this one
Okay, so let's go through that one. So here we had negative 7, negative 2, 3, 8. So first you should have found that there is a constant difference every time we are adding 5. Okay, so our constant difference is plus 5. So I'm going to start off by writing Tn equals 5 n. I know that much so far. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see what must I do to get from 5 to negative 7. So to go from 5 to negative 7 I need to subtract 12 because 5 minus 12 will give me negative 7. So that is what you should have got for that pattern over there, for the rule for that pattern. Okay, now we're going to go back. So now that we've done some practice of finding, just finding rules, now we're going to go back to some full examples where we're going to be using those rules to actually do stuff. Okay, to work things out. Right, so in this example over here, we've got the pattern 6, 2, negative 2, negative 6. And we need to first write on the next three terms. Then we need to describe the pattern in words. Then we need to find the nth term. Then we're going to determine the 25th term of the pattern. And finally, we're going to determine the, which term in the pattern equals negative 30. Okay. So, in this example, we're starting with a pattern 6, 2, negative 2, negative 6. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do that I always do first is to determine if I have a constant difference. So, over here, I'm going minus 4, then minus 4 and minus 4. So I've got a constant difference of negative 4. Okay, then I'm going to answer question A, which is to just write down the next three terms in the pattern. So I can just carry on following the same pattern of minusing 4 every time and I'll get negative 10, negative 14, and negative 18. So that's what I should get for question A, just carrying on and getting the next three terms. Okay, question B, we have to describe the pattern in words. Okay, so now in this example, because I've got a difference of negative 4, um, I'm, I can say that I'm counting backwards in 4s. But I can't just say that we're counting backwards in 4s because that would imply that we're starting at negative 4 and counting backwards. But we're not starting at negative 4, we're starting at 6. So I have to specify where we are starting because it's not the expected value that we should be starting at. So we are starting from 6. Okay, so we're counting backwards and forwards starting from 6. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of describing it in words is to talk about what's happening when we go from one term to the next. We are subtracting 4 from each term to, the, to get the next term. And again, I have to specify where we're starting because we're not starting at the, at the expected value. We are starting at 6. Okay. I can also talk about the relationship between the term number and the term value. So if I'm going to talk about the relationship between the term number and the term value, it becomes a little bit a little bit more complicated now because I'm not just multiplying by something or dividing by something. I am multiplying and then I need to add or subtract. Okay, so in this case, I am multiplying the term number by negative 4. And then, if I just multiply 1 by negative 4, I'm going to get negative 4. But I'm starting at 6, so I need to add from negative 4 to get to 6, I need to add 10. So we are multiplying the term, by num term number by negative 4 and then increasing it. By 10, or then adding 10. Okay, 
So again, we can describe it in a few different ways, talking about how we are counting, how we get from one term to the next term, or talking about the relationship between the term number and the term value. Okay, question C. Find the nth term. So now this is the rule that we need to find. So Tn, which is the nth term, is equal to... Okay, so now we've already worked out what our common difference is. It was negative 4. So I'm going to go straight away and write negative 4n. I know that it's going to be negative 4n, but I need to find out now what I'm going to write after that. So to get from negative 4 to 6, I need to add 10. So my rule is Tn equals negative 4n plus 10. Then question D. Now we're going to use that rule to help us to answer these two questions, D and E. So for question D, I need to work out the 25th term of the pattern. So that's T25. So I'm going to change the N, because over here, if I'm finding the, the 25th term, I've changed N to 25 there. So I'm going to change this N to 25 as well. So negative 4 times 25 plus 10. Okay, so now I need to just simplify this. Negative 4 times 25 is negative 100 plus 10 gives me negative 90. So for question D, the 25th term is equal to negative 90. And then question E, we have to determine which term in the pattern equals negative 30. So now I'm going to be using my rule again, but now I know what the value of the term is. I know the Tn value is negative 30, but I don't know what n is yet. That's what I need to work out. I need to work out where in the pattern is this term that is equal to negative 30. So negative 30 is equal to negative 4n plus 10. So now I need to work out what this is. Okay. Now, we are still later on going to learn about solving equations, which is what this is. But at this point, you can just do it by solving by inspection and using trial and error. So I know that I need to have something that I'm multiplying by negative 4 and adding 10 and whatever that n is or whatever I get there I need to it needs to equal negative 30. So I need to know what must I multiply negative 4 by and then add 10 to get negative 30. Okay so first of all before I added the 10 what would that have been equal to? Okay so what would I have had before I added negative 10? To get negative before I added 10 to get negative 30, I would have had negative 40 because negative 30 is 10 more than negative 40. So if I don't have that over there, this would have been negative 40. So then, what do I multiply n by, or what do I multiply negative 4 by to get negative 40? I multiply negative 4 by 10 to get negative 40. So n must be equal to 10. Another way of doing it is to use trial and error and to say, well, I'm going to guess that it's maybe somewhere around the 10 mark. Sim substitute it in C if I get negative 30, and if I don't, then adjust. Make N one more, or make one, N one less, or so on, and carry on trying it out until I get to the correct N value. So N is equal to 10, which means that the 10th term is equal to negative 30 or the 10th term is negative 30. Okay, so that's what you should have got, what you should get for question E. Okay, so now I'm going to give you one that you're going to work on for yourself, where you're going to use again the rule to work out the different things in that you're being asked for. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes to work on this one.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So in this example, we've got the pattern 12, 22, 32, 42. So the first thing we're going to do is to look and see what the common difference is. Okay, so I'm going up every time I'm adding 10. Okay, so for question A, nice and easy, we just need to write down the next three terms. So 12, 22, 32, 42 plus 10 is going to be 52, then 62, and 72. So that's what you should have got for question A. Nice and easy. Question B, we need to describe the pattern in words. So again, we can either talk about how we are counting, or we can talk about um, what are we doing to each term to get the next term, or we can talk about the relationship between the term number and the term value. Okay, so first, how we are counting. We are counting in tens. I'm just going to specify forwards in tens from 12. Okay, remember, because we're not just counting in tens like normal, 10, 12, 10, 20, 30, 40, it's 12, 22, 32, 42. We need to specify where we're starting. We're starting from 12. Okay, so we're counting it forward in tens from 12. We can also talk about what we're doing to each term to get the next term. So we are adding 10 to each term. to get the next term starting from 12. Okay, then finally we can talk about the relationship between the term number and the term value. So here I've got my term number is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and if you did do this one you would have got that we are multiplying The term number by 10 and then adding two okay so that's what you should have got for any one of those for describing it in words question C we need to find TN the rule okay so TN is equal to so now, first of all, when I found my common difference, I found that it was 10. So it's going to be positive 10n. So I'm starting off with tn equals 10n. But if it was just 10n, my pattern would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But it's not. It's 12, 22, 32, 42. So how do I get from 10, 20, 30 to 12, 22, 32? I need to add 2. So to get from 10 to 12, I must add 2. So over here, I plus 2. So that's my rule. Then question D, I have to determine the 12th term in the pattern. So I'm going to replace the N with 12 in my rule. So T12 is equal to 10 times 12 plus 2. Simplify that. That gives me 120 plus 2 is 122. So my 12th term is 122. And then question E, we have to determine which term in the pattern is equal to 92. Okay, so... 92 is the value of the term. I need to work out what the position is, which is n. So 92 equals 10n plus 2. So now I need to know what must I multiply it, what must I multiply 10 by and then add 2 to get 92. So if I take off the adding 2 part, then this is going to be 90 over here. Okay, if before I added 2, it was 90. So what did I have to multiply 10 by to get 90? I have to multiply 10 by 9. So n is equal to 9. So therefore, it's the ninth term, or t9. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that question. Now we're just going to do two more patterns, where you're just going to find the rules for these patterns, but these ones are more tricky, okay? So be careful with these ones. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this first one. See if you can figure out what the rule is for this pattern. And I'm warning you, it's not one. It's not the same as the ones we were doing before. So you need to think a little bit more carefully for this one.
Okay, so let's go through that and see if you manage to get it. So for this one, first of all, let's start off just like we always do by seeing if there's a constant difference. So I've got from one to four, I add three. Then from four to nine, I add five. From nine to 16, I add seven. So now I've got a problem because this is not a constant difference. Okay, now if you look at it, you might notice that three, five, seven actually is a pattern in and of itself. They have a constant difference of two. Okay, but this over here is not constant. Three, five, seven is not constant. So I'm not going to have, I can't say it's three in or five in or seven in because it's not the same every time. Okay, so now this set of numbers is a set of numbers that you may have recognized. And if you did, well done. If you didn't, don't beat yourself up. It's, this was a tricky one, okay? So let's have a look at what our term numbers are. One, two, three, four, okay? So now another way of saying, of working this out is to, like we did with other ones, say, how do we get from there to here? Is there something that I can do that's the same every single time, okay? So from one to one, it stays the same. I didn't do anything, okay? So how can we make it stay the same? We can either add and subtract the same thing, or we can multiply and divide by the same thing, or we can multiply by one, or we can add zero, okay? Those, that's how we can go from one to one. From two to four, I can either uh, add two, or I can multiply by two, okay? So over here, I can times by one, here I can times by two, here I can times by three, here I can times by four. Okay, now the, the addition isn't really going to help me because I can't, here I'm adding zero, here I'm adding two, here I'm adding six, here I'm adding 12, it's, it, that's not going to really help me. But this, this can actually help me because if you look at this over here, I'm multiplying one by one, multiplying two by two, I'm multiplying three by three and I'm multiplying four by four. So every time I'm multiplying the term number by itself. So my rule for this one, Tn is equal to N multiplied by N. Now how else could we write that? We could also write that as N squared. So if you look at this, you might have noticed that these are our square numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16, and if I carry on going, I would get 25, 36, 49, 64, and so on. So these are our square numbers. So Tn is equal to n squared. Now, if you didn't get that, don't worry too much. It was a tricky one. It's the first time you've seen one like that. Okay, but if you did get it, well done. Question B. Now, this is also a tricky one, and it's different. Okay, so for question B, here you've got the pattern 2, 4, 8, 16. Now let's see if you can figure out what this one is. I'm going to give you two minutes for this one again.
Okay, let's go through that and see if you manage to figure out what it is. So for this one, I've got 2, 4, 8, 16. So first, let's see if there's a constant difference. Okay, so to go from 2 to 4, I'm adding 2. Here, I'm adding 4. Here, I am adding 8. Okay, so that is not a constant difference. And even if I go to the second level, like I did over there, here I had a constant difference when I went to the, the differences of the differences, they were constant. But here, if I keep on going, it's again plus 2, plus 4. So it's going to be exactly the same thing all over again. It's not constant. Okay, so that's not going to work over here. And a hint, that means it's not going to be something squared. Okay, when you've got a constant difference on the second level like that, it's going to be squared. When you haven't, it's not squared. Okay, so we have to do something else. So in this one over here, let's again have a look at our term numbers and see if that's going to help us. Okay, so what can I do to go from 1 to 2? I can either add 1 or times by 2. What can I do to go from 2 to 4? I can either add 2 or I can times by 2. What can I do from to go from 3 to 8? I can either add 5 or I can times by something else. Okay, that's not going to work because none of those are constant. Okay, so again, that's not going to really help us just adding or, or multiplying by something every time. So we need a different approach for this one. So let's have a look at what was actually happening here. Let's see if there's a different relationship between the terms apart from a common difference. Okay, now you might have noticed when you were doing this, every time you were adding the term's value to itself. So I was adding 2 to 2, or here I was adding 4 to 4, or here I was adding 8 to 8. Now what is it? what does it mean when we add something to itself? What's another way of referring to that? Another way of referring to it is doubling it or timesing by 2. Here adding 2 to itself is the same as timesing 2 by 2. Adding 4 to itself is the same as timesing 4 by 2. Adding 8 to itself is the same as timesing 8 by 2. So another way of doing this, instead of looking for a common difference, is to look for a common ratio, which is times by 2, times by 2, and times by 2. So in this example, I didn't have a common difference. I actually have a common ratio. Now, how are we going to put this into a rule, though? Okay, so Tn is equal to something and every single time I'm multiplying by 2. Now what do we call it when we have 2 multiplied and multiplied and multiplied? Because every time it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. What is that called? That is where we have exponents. Okay, so we're going to have 2. That is what we're multiplying every single time. It's 2's to the power of what? How many 2's do I have over here? I have 1 2. So it's 2 to the power of 1. Here I have 2 to the power of 2 gives me 4. 2 to the power of 3 gives me 8. So here, my term number tells me how many 2's I'm multiplying together. So I'm multiplying 1 2, I'm multiplying 2 2's, I'm multiplying 3 2's, I'm multiplying 4 2's. So this is actually going to be Tn equals 2 to the power of n. So that was a really tricky one. So if you got that, well done. And if you didn't, don't worry. It's That was a really hard one. Okay. Um, but if you did get it, well, well done. Okay, so that is how we work with numeric patterns, writing them in the form of sequences. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.